Welcome to Pace Moments. Here, our experts and guests discuss many aspects of corporate finance and analytical models that will help make better, more informed business decisions possible in your organization. I'm Doug Hicks. With a degree in business and a passion for managerial accounting, I've been helping organizations improve the cost information they need for making well-informed, economically sound business decisions for nearly 40 years. I'm also a director of PACE. And in this edition of PACE Moments, I'm going to talk about depreciation in management accounting. First, we need to get a little perspective of how depreciation is looked at for financial and tax accounting versus managerial accounting. Financial and tax accounting is backward looking. It's concerned about assigning capital funds already spent to the specific time periods benefit, benefited by the assets purchased. Its purpose is to measure past performance. Profit measurement is paramount and things that have happened cannot be changed. In financial and tax accounting, sunk costs are relevant. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is forward-looking. It's concerned about accumulating the funds required to preserve the organization's existing capital base over time. Managerial accounting's purpose is to optimize future performance. Cash flow is paramount in managerial accounting, and the future can be influenced and created by effectively using management accounting. In managerial accounting, sunk costs are irrelevant. Now let's look at the way that financial and tax accounting determines depreciation expense. First, they start with the original sunk, read irrelevant, cost of a capital asset. Then go to column A and select one of the allowable chronological lives of that capital asset. Then move over to column B and select one of the allowable depreciation methods for that capital asset. Apply the selected life and the method to the irrelevant sunk cost of the asset to arrive at depreciation expense. Now, does this seem like it would arrive at a meaningful measure of expense? I wouldn't think so. It's too many variables, too many choices, and it's all being driven by an irrelevant cost to begin with. So for managerial costing purposes, Financial and tax accounting's depreciation expense is an irrelevant, inaccurate, and misleading concept and should be ignored. However, a provision must be made to accumulate the funds required to preserve a company's existing production capacity over time. Now, whereas financial and tax accounting are focused on measurements during arbitrary timeframes that are based on orbits of astronomical bodies, managerial accounting is focused on the long-term sustainable economics of an organization. Effective organizations operate on a continuum, not in individual discrete periods. They underachieve when they play the game and adjust their actions and decisions in response to moon and earth orbits. So accumulating the funds to preserve the existing capital base should be viewed like a sinking fund, should be a causality driven accumulation of funds collected as part of the ongoing revenue received from customers. And as a sinking fund, it should be a steady, consistent causality driven accumulation of the funds needed to cover the long-term capital needs of an organization. At any point in time, that fund may be over or short. It doesn't matter, as long as it'll provide the needed capital funds over time. Now, there's two main drivers or causes for the need to fund the preservation of capital assets. One is time. The assets wear out because they get old or because they become obsolete. The other is usage. The assets simply wear out as they are used. There's one additional factor that goes in there, however, is that's leases. Leases are an ongoing, usually time-driven cost of preserving assets. Time-driven capital preservation 
applies to things like office equipment and buildings and technology. It's a regular periodic amount that will provide for the replacement of existing assets as they lose their effectiveness through either age or obsolescence. It can be similar to straight line depreciation charge, except it's based on future capital needs, not past expenditures, and it could be modified as better information about the future becomes available. Usage-driven capital preservation usually applies to production equipment. An amount that provides for the replacement of the assets capability for each uptime hour, machine cycle, or other unit of driver that tracks the consumption of the current resource. is similar to a units of production depreciation charge, an acceptable yet ra uh, rarely used method, except it's based on future capital needs, not past expenditures, and it also can be modified as better information about the future becomes available. Leases can be either time or usage driven, but it's a charge that will fund the lease payment over the life of the lease. Now it can be time driven that parallels the timing of lease payments, or it could be usage driven amount that divides the lifetime lease cost by the expected equipment driver units. So it can still be a cost per hour cycle or so forth during the term of the lease, as long as it balances out over the course of the entire lease. A few other issues to keep in mind is the difference between capital to preserve the business and capital to grow the business. The capital funds required to grow an organization come from its profits and should not be incorporated into the cost of current business. There's also situations where a company has to catch up for failure to spend enough capital in the past. The capital funds required to make up for past capital spending shortfalls should also come from profits and not be incorporated into the basic cost structure of the current business. This is all about measuring the right thing. Managerial accounting deals with the future and long-term sustainability, and the capital required to sustain the business is essential. Funds spent in the past are irrelevant. Now, all of this is much more difficult than going and grabbing the amount you paid for a capital asset, picking a life and picking a method, and then crunching some numbers. You have to actually peer into the crystal ball, make some forecasts and projections, and it's difficult. It's always, always difficult to predict and measure the future, including the capital requirements. But keep in mind, it is always better to estimate the right things than to precisely measure the wrong things. So to sum up, depreciation is measured by financial or tax accounting as no place in managerial costing. Instead, a causality driven provision of funds should be incorporated into an organization's cost and pricing structure to provide for the preservation of the organization's existing capital base. The capital funds required to grow an organization or to make up for past spending shortfalls should come from its profits and are not part of the cost of current business. That's my point of view. What do you think? Let us know by posting your comments in the forum on PACE's website. Thanks for listening, and I hope to talk to you again soon.